hello sorry about that we're having some technical difficulties with our remote but welcome to episode 29 of Soren Pair why not together we just did a little magic trick you came into the, you weren't there and then you appeared <laughs> of course on the podcast they don't know that but yes as we have challenges we just roll with it yeah, so all you we need to do. replace the remote battery apparently <laughs> which is interesting because this kind of goes with today's topic yes it does actually you're right which is which is coping <laughs> coping with change that's it with constant change <laughs> with constant change and how to thrive in the midst of constant change um instead of letting it paralyze us speaking of change she doesn't know this so i'm like <laughs> Last episode, it was the first time I forgot to do a Sandyism at the oh. end. Uh, and we, we finished, we're like, yeah, we're done. I'm like, I didn't do a Sandyism. And there's still more. I mean, at some point, I'm going to run out. So those of, those of you who are new to our podcast, a Sandyism is a quirky little phrase said a certain way by one Sandy over here to my left. And I, since we got together, I call them Sandyisms. And... There's been quite a few. We've almost done one every episode. We're in yeah. episode 29. I still got a little bit in the back pocket here to share. So I thought I would change it up and do it at the beginning. Oh, okay. Well, that's so see, constant change. <laughs> here it is. Score! <laughs> I, I put my arms up in the air, too. You know, like a referee. Score. Uh, after a field goal in football, but score and what does that mean? Although it may be obvious, well, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, I'm celebrating. We Whatever to... it may be, you know, it's yeah. there's lots of reasons to celebrate. <laughs> when we first started talking, and we just actually celebrated the fact that we started really connecting and talking like ten years ago this last week. Yeah. Yeah. We were just thinking, oh my gosh, it's 2010. Do you remember we really started talking like every day on the phone, best friends, and what hours? What, what what she would uh, what I what was burned in my mind is I would say, oh, you know, I just realized this, and she'd go score. <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, I didn't know what to call these cute little phrases. You know, <laughs> threw um, you off, didn't it? Well, it just. You know, right on crouton, and I did way back at the beginning, cha, cha, which means I was finally I had to ask her. I'm like, what are you, what does that mean? Is that short for something? It took you a while, didn't it? I was <laughs> almost afraid to ask. So, Sandyisms are not gone away yet. So, welcome back, Sandyisms. All right. So, score, score, <laughs> score. <laughs> so, even changing the format up a little bit is 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 really fine with us I mean you know it's it's part of life because right. you know I've always heard the only thing constant in life is change yeah it's and so true our bodies are changing from one moment to the next right mm -hmm. cells are reproducing and yeah you know we're growing up which is a good thing <laughs> well until you get over that hill and then we're growing old <laughs> you know constant change uh, yeah. yes uh you know gray happens yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Well, so I've embraced the gray in my life. but yeah. And the, I'm fighting it, kicking and screaming every step of the way. <laughs> and that, and that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, but change happens not only physiologically to us, but also obviously psychologically, mm -hmm. constantly. Constantly. I think when you fight it um, is when you run up against roadblocks and you get stagnant and stuck. Um, when you embrace it and lean into it, um, you can bring about the change that you want instead of the change that you don't want. And I've talked about this before, but I get in my own little comfort zones and I don't want, you know, the routine of the comfort Ricky. zone. Yes, routine Ricky again, almost comes up every week now. <laughs> um, that's probably a new Sandyism mm -hmm. now that I think about it. Um, but... You know, I think all of us are creatures of habit, have habit, have it. I just got to have it. changing words. <laughs> so, yes, and we're not editing that. So creatures of habit um, and the whole idea of Pavlov's dog. 
Yeah. You know? So we, we very, and our dog Coco is very much a creature of routine. Oh my gosh. Yes. So changing that up once in a while, um, kind of helps break that. Cause I, I really almost go into a sleepwalking mode sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes to change things up, I'll do things as simple as, um, changing the route that I take. If you take the same route to the grocery store or the bank or work, um, I'll be known to switch up my path just so that I don't get into this mindless routine. Yeah. In fact, we jumped into the car, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago to go to the store and you went that way instead of that way. In my mind, I'm like, what is she doing? And I thought, nope, I've learned. At least I've learned. It's like, good job. The store's that way. <laughs> it's the other way. And lo and behold, we got there just fine. Yeah. Um, I prefer to go that way. It's easier than trying to turn left on a busy street. Right. And so it's just so interesting how my mind, I mean, before I could even think, just went, what are you doing? <laughs> like, that that is but he learned not to question me uh, good job i know <laughs> score <laughs> right but really change can be a shock to the system though yeah, when we're talking about absolutely. big changes because it upsets that routine it upsets those very grooves that we get into expectation right yeah yeah and when you have that expectation on yourself i think that can get confining almost self-imposed and you don't even realize that you're doing it sometimes comfort it can be comforting and other times it just isn't right and 2020 has definitely upset the apple cart as we say it's, it's squeezed us all out of our comfort it's zone turned sure. everything upside down it's it you know whether we were every year you know this always always happened nope not in 2020 you know I mean, right. it, everything has kind of changed. It's changed how we just go out to the grocery store. We're running a quick errand. It's changed a lot of things. It's challenging us, I think, mm -hmm. to break out of our own comfort zones and to embrace the change in a better way, to bring about the change that we want to see instead of just rinse and repeat. Another Sandyism, by the way. I, I just made it. <laughs> rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. She, she kind of said that to me a lot because I did a lot of rinsing and repeating, you know. Yeah. But it, it's true. 2020 has kind of forced the issue. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be a timely thing to just talk about, you know, how to deal with change and how to cope with it and hopefully right. eventually thrive with it, even if it's. You know, it's tougher for me than it is for her. I mean, one example is I've had one job for mm -hmm. 31 and a half years. And she's had, I want to say 30 jobs, but probably 20 jobs. Yeah, I've had a lot of jobs. In the I'm, same time. I'm kind of a gypsy. And um, that's one of the reasons I got into nursing is I knew that I loved working, you know, with and for people. And so I knew that I could move around within my profession without having to keep changing jobs because, you know, it's okay. You can do that. And it was a good fit for me. Right. So you have been a nurse for 20 years, close to close to 20 years. Um, but within that, you, you, definitely... I've moved around quite a bit. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, I just, the last job that you've had for three years. So that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's. Mm -hmm. long term it's all about growth and um, embracing the change you know when I feel like I'm starting to get stagnant or if I feel like there's just nothing left to learn in the space that I'm at then I have to challenge myself and I move on right and I think that comes naturally to you to me it was all about consistency foundation you know I've tuned piano for 35 years yeah. um, you know a lot of the same customers for many years I've had the although the same job I've definitely had different I've moved up and, and changed locations so I haven't sat in the same desk for 32 years right but I just find that interesting the contrast as we go through these um, I think Sandy kind of represents the um, segment of the population it's kind of like 
yeah, it's tough, but okay, here we go. Let's do it. You know, let's just embrace it. Again. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> like I'm, I'm white knuckling the um, roller coaster. And she's like, Woo! I see you in the basement with your red stapler. <laughs> Jim, you were fired. You haven't gotten a paycheck. It's time to go. <laughs> that's, that's kind of mean. What was that movie? The Office? Mm -hmm. The Office. Office the, Space. Office Space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the red stapler. I want the red stapler. I want my red stapler. <laughs> Well, in the end, he won, though, right? He did win. He, like, owned the whole place or something. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so coping with change, I think, um, is different on every level. Um, For and, sure. and people really, um, you know, and I think all of us have really been pushed to our limits. So I think the, the first thing when something happens is, and I, this is me, acknowledge that you know change is happening instead of fighting it like we right. mentioned before it you know putting it out there in the open instead of yeah burying it well and you know like like we've talked before um you know when you bury it it's going to come back in another way um not that you want to always be <clears throat> dissecting everything about yourself that's just exhausting but when things come up, allowing them to come up and then realizing that, um, you know, things are going to change whether you want them to or not. Right. And it's almost like so, you can either go with it. Right. Or, you know, it's like swimming against the current. Yes. Yes. Swimming yeah. Upstream. Do you want to make it easier for yourself and embrace the change that you want to see? Or do you want to keep fighting it? Because it will keep coming back if, you know, you don't accept whatever's going on. It'll come back in a different way. So, right. Yeah. So it, it's that whole. I don't, I don't know if I want to say surrender, but it's almost like okay, this has happened. You know, um, so let's just take COVID nineteen from it. It's happened. Mm -hmm. We can't undo it. You know, we can't go back to that province in China and say, "Hey guys, mask up." You yeah. know, it's it's too late. Yeah. So it's happened. It's it's challenging. There's a lot going on. And I mean, it's almost like, do you just incessantly sit there and complain about it? Or do you go, okay, let's... How do I, how do I deal with this? Yes. How do I fix it? What can I work on? Yeah. yeah. What can I work on in myself so that I'm, you know, not part of the problem and I'm learning from it, you know, instead of, gosh, dang, this whole COVID thing, it's messed up everything. And isn't that, and then you get a whole bunch of people to agree with you and you're all upset and yeah but not doing anything productive productive exactly yeah well and sometimes i think i might be jumping ahead here but getting a lot of people to agree with you um being heard just be needing to be heard in the midst of this is um nothing wrong with that you know we all need that touchstone person somebody to to vent to as long as you're not doing it for too long right well yeah and venting to a point and 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 unless it becomes it's helpful until it isn't right until you're right. what i would call wallowing in the mud yeah you know? well and you know there's nothing wrong with with getting hit, muddy with it yeah getting muddy hitting rocks whatever you know um there's nothing wrong with that because that's how you grow right but it's when you stay there and wallow in the mud <laughs> right and if you're talking with somebody I mean I, I, and venting after you've kind of gotten that out it's about but what can okay so this is the way it is the change has happened you know in the world or at work or in yourself maybe you found out something about your yeah you know, to me the big the big challenge is I'm older than I used to be you know and you just found this out just <laughs> Just right before we turn on this podcast. Wow. I mean. You're, you're handling it very well. <laughs> my, you're kind of messing up my, my train of thought here, but that's okay. I do it to you all the time. So <laughs> I, I do throw squirrels at her a lot. Yeah. So she's like. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's squirrely me. But um, so once you're like, oh my gosh, you know, Gray's coming up or this is happening or. I'm, I'm not happy about the fact that I don't have as much energy or do what I used to do. I think all of us at some point go, oh, of course. you know, I'm, 
I'm not the same way I used to be. It's like, but what can I do right now in this body, in this age, to, you know, to, to maybe improve where I'm at instead of just going, well, I'm just old and that's it. I'm just going to roll over. Yeah. You know, so I think that kind of complacency is the biggest um, getting stuck and not being able to go with the change. I think it's, it's, it's almost like you become in the river flow of life, you become one of those boulders and that creates friction. Right. Right. And right. You know, then it, it really makes things tumultuous for you and the people around you because you're like, no, I'm going to hang on. I don't want to, right. You know, go with the flow. Kind of thing. That that that's so true. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is that even positive change can also create stress. Of course, it's still change. It's still a disruption to your schedule, to the expected, to your comfort zones. Um, yeah. So, like a vacation is can be stressful. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, it's like at work, we always call it the PTO punishment. Because you have to, you know, it's stressful getting everything ready before you go. You don't want to hand off a big mess to somebody else. So you get all your, your work cue in a good place. And that's a lot of stress. Right. And, and there's the stress of got to get to the place we're going. Is everything right. going to be all right? And, and so the planning. You know, yeah, yeah the, the, the planning and then just going. So I think a lot of times vacations that are supposed to be you know, relaxing and letting go can turn out to be yeah. anything but that. Yeah, that's why I, I really prefer to just fly by the seat of my pants with vacations. I like to make loosely laid plans so that, you know, we could choose A or B. <laughs> and, and we did that in our Canadian um, vacation uh, the we summer did. of 2019. And it um, was great. We had loose late plans. We knew we were going to go to this national park and that national park, but we ended up staying, I think, an extra day or two in the Canadian Rockies. Mm -hmm. We just did not want to leave. No, I could have stayed up there a lot longer. And so beautiful. We had to drive a little longer because we had an expiration date, but um, that kind of going with the flow and just like, we're going to mm -hmm. enjoy this a little longer. We're not ready to let it go. <laughs> yeah. We were not ready to let the beauty of that landscape, yeah. you know, go. Yeah, it's amazing. It is. So, so dealing with the good kind of stress um, or the good kind of change can create that kind of stress. So I think mm -hmm. that's, that's something that we continue to work on. Um, something else we talked about is keeping an anchor. Mm -hmm. what, what do we and mean by is, that? This is, you know, where it gets kind of almost... Um, counterintuitive you know the anchor you don't want to get stuck in your routines to where you're not allowing yourself to grow and move out of that but having that one solid anchor one or two solid anchors that bring you back to that like give me an example for you well to me it would be um, no matter what we do I want to go back and and you know um, sit down at the, the piano and, and right. play when I, yeah. when I can yeah, it's another way of really saying getting grounded, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do to get grounded? What do you do to bring you back to yourself? What do you do? What's an anchor for you? Uh, for me, is meditation. Her husband? Oh, sorry. Yeah. The anchor of her life. You're the anchor of my life. I have, a, I have an anchor tattoo on like Popeye. On my yeah, arm. that could be taken a couple of ways. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving but, along, sorry. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, you know, just having that anchor. Um, another one for me is, you know, just to read, to meditate, to um, just work with my plants like we talked about last week. These are all things that just bring me back to center. You know? Right, and it doesn't mean that you're not embracing the change. It means no. that you're still reminding yourself, okay, this is... I'm, I'm still me. I'm still mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But doing something, you know, it can be something as simple as doing something that you like to do, something that relaxes you. 
Right. Um, to just give the mind a break, give the emotions a break, because it can be emotional when you're going through a lot of change. It's disruptive. So something relaxing like eating ice cream. That's a big one for me. Yeah. <laughs> Dilly, nah, I lately, have a problem. it's Dilly bars. Um, but we're going into fall. You know what's coming. Okay. Peppermint ice cream. Huge weakness for me. Yes. Huge. It is. Yeah. Every we, year. we start kind of, um, what do I want to say? There's a certain brand of ice cream that makes the peppermint. And it has to be a certain type of peppermint ice cream. Can't yeah. just be any old peppermint ice cream. Yeah. And it's so, yeah, yes. the dryer is we have to start perusing the ice cream um, aisle and and I I'm know, waiting in the aisles for them to deliver, basically. <laughs> but in the meantime, it's been dilly bars and we we're joking around like dilly dilly. Yeah. <laughs> but we're talking about making poking fun of Sandy and I have my own things too. My comfort food would be like peanut butter and more right. peanut butter and, and more peanut butter anything Reese's like Reese's pumpkins you know this is a good time to talk about too sorry to interrupt Not you for um with the uh, carbs exactly right yes so carbs do what actually because you know people talk about stress eating right Mm -hmm. What do carbs actually do to the body it well it's comfort food and it helps to raise your um your serotonin. your serotonin, right? Right. Yeah. It raises the serotonin and it gives you that boost of energy. It makes the brain feel good. It's just very comforting. Um, to again, until it isn't. <laughs> and, yeah, the, the Greek motto, moderation in all things. <laughs> yes, yes, until it isn't. Um, you know, just keeping it to to a balance and realizing, yeah, I'm I'm reaching for a comfort food. A good example of that is when I was in nursing school, I didn't even realize I was doing it. I would make these um, pasta salad, macaroni salad. It was my study food. And I didn't realize that I was doing it before a big test every time until somebody pointed it out to me that I was doing it every time. I was like, oh wow, that's a comfort food for me. And it was, you know, the carbs. That makes sense. It helped to calm me down. Right. And you didn't crash in the middle of your test or anything? Well, it's not like I was eating it during a test. I was studying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, and so there's a reason for that. It isn't just poking fun of people and saying, oh, you're stress eating. It actually does, it's a coping mechanism for, for, for any kind of change. Right. That you're dealing with. Right. Or uncertainty. I mean, that could be another adjective, you know, because with change, comes uncertainty sure which sure. you know i'm a big fan of certainty yeah yeah you, you are know, i like things a certain way and you know yeah yeah and i think that's you know we're getting into the difference between not just between you and i but male female um, um i think that's a real common difference you know guys like to see the picture they they like to see tangibly what's happening and women are a little better about seeing further yeah having that you and I have talked about that that you can walk into an empty room and see it decorated and I'm like it's an empty room <laughs> you can't see it <laughs> I don't okay I'm not quite sure how that would look and you like show me a you know I, I don't know a picture yeah you yeah. know it's just interesting to me the difference um yeah so another big way to cope with change deal with change is the exercise yes you know like walking even something yeah. as simple as that yeah getting out getting your body moving um, it not only helps you helps me to process what I'm dealing with and thinking about and absorbing the changes in my life but <laughs> my dog <laughs> my dog is snoring really loud <laughs> and we're not gonna, we're not going to edit it it's Hopefully none of you are snoring right now, but <laughs> this is what she does to me while I'm at work. She sits under my desk and snores. <laughs> yeah, well, she's comfortable, so. It's a good thing. Anyway, getting moving. Yes, it's really good way to process what you're going through. Right, and like you say, work out the details. So, mm -hmm. 
Um, I know when there's been big changes in my life, I just want to get out and walk. Yeah. You know, just walk, walk, walk. It just helps me. Yeah. It's, it's like the, we've talked about this before, um, the active walking meditation is basically what it is. It's almost like, you know, you're consciously just working it out. Right. Just like you get into deep cleaning when you, you're working through something. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's that whole idea of just, I don't know, moving. Because if I'm sitting there um, worrying, um, wringing my hands, so to speak. It gets more overwhelming, doesn't it? Doesn't, it it doesn't help me. doing anything with it. No, I'm just sort you know? of letting it like overtake my emotions, overtake, you know, my, um, over, it's overwhelming. When something gets overwhelming, it's like, I feel like I'm being drowned. Yeah, you know? this gives you control. Right. It gives you a feeling of control, of taking back control and working through it. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that. Another way to, to cope and help with change is you know, looking at it as an opportunity for growth. Right. You know. And that it is. Yeah. I'm uh, making a list of of wanted and unwanted changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the people that <clears throat> need to see it on paper, you know, that need to see it, like we were talking a minute ago, it might help to to write down what you see and what you want, what you don't want, so that you can kind of gear things to the way you need them to be. Right, and it's all the whole idea of, you know, having that kind of tangible vision or, okay, so this has happened, where do I want to see my, I mean, the typical question in an interview is, where do you see yourself in five years? Or, where, do you, where do you see, you know, right. and a lot of people are like, uh, uh, I have your job, Mr. Manager, you know? Yeah. And, and so it's, it really is realizing that change is inevitable and why don't you use that as fuel as fuel to help you yeah you know like where do you want to be yeah what do you want to do e exactly you know just to be a little more thought instead of a victim of the change right you're a maker of the change well and and it's the difference between stale yeah. getting and stale and getting mm -hmm. fresh getting fresh <laughs> you know it's like not taking a shower for a long time and taking a shower. <laughs> Stale and fresh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, also, I mean, this is something that you were talking about earlier to me is leaning in and adapting mm -hmm. to create a positive change. I know you talked about it a little bit earlier, but that, yeah. that leaning into it. Even if you don't want to, right? I think especially if you don't want to. Um, you know, if, if it's something that you're afraid of or that makes you uncomfortable, I, I think that's really a good key right there. If it makes you uncomfortable, it probably warrants some exploration on your part. Mm -hmm. um, whatever makes us uncomfortable is an opportunity for growth and it's a way of telling us this is an area that needs some attention. On um, the difference between uh, avoiding that and almost like, okay, I, I want to hit this straight on. That's one thing that you've really taught me is that you're willing to go, okay, this is, this is uncomfortable, yeah. but I am going to look at it or I'm going to talk about it or I'm going to do something about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, do you want to keep carrying it? Right? Right. You know, if you want to be able to put it down, you got to eventually deal with it. That's right. true. Right. And another thing to be careful of um, is comparing yourself to others. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's I, a big one. It, it is with, you know, how, oh, other, other people's lives are great. Because um, as we were talking about earlier, social media is the happy highlights of, of people's life. Right, and I think we all need to be careful of that because, you know, what we see online is not necessarily, you know, it's definitely not the full picture. It's the highlights of somebody else's life, and then we get into a rut of comparing ourselves, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with finding, 
saying, you know what, I want that for myself. That's great. That's part of the positive stress of, of the change and, you know, bringing that into being. But when you start being down on yourself for it, that's, you're in a whole different area. And you've got to be careful of posting those down moments online because you can't undo that. Right. So if you're airing your dirty laundry, just my opinion, all the time online, right. um, I think you're, you know, unfortunately, you know, you can't take that back and you're almost asking for attention in the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I completely agree. And, you know, this goes back to the thought we were mentioning earlier of being part of the change that you want to see, you know, putting out there the positive change that you want to see around you and in yourself. The more you focus on, the more you create. It's, it's very, very true. And I think, um, lastly, just be kind to yourself. This might, maybe this one should have been flipped to be first. <laughs> yeah, because 2020 has been such a yeah. bumpy year in, for everybody. There hasn't been anybody that hasn't been affected one us. way or another by 2020. Exactly. None of us are getting out of this unscathed. Um, you know, different degrees and ways that it, we're all being affected, but being kind to ourselves and each other, I think is, you know, a good reminder that we're all going through it. Yeah. Well, and, and I like, we were, we were looking at something earlier and it said, there are no mistakes, only good stories for later. I love that. <laughs> uh, some of them are fun. a good story. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, and we always go to this uh, with almost every um, thing we talk about it. It's all about the lightning of it and the laughter. You have to sometimes just laugh at yourself or the situation that's going on. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, what, what else can you do? Yeah. I did it again. Yeah. yeah. Here I go again. Routine Ricky. You know, the same, the same reaction, the same, you know, default answer, whatever, you yeah. know. So I think laughing at ourselves and just... Having fun with Lightning it. Lightning alone. Being okay it. with, you know. With we, not being perfect. Yes. Right? <laughs> we messed up. We didn't get it right. You know. Yeah. You know, us and everybody else. And that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. all about growth anyway. Right. Because we're all fighting our own personal battles, let alone all the challenges and battles that are out there. Exactly. You know, right Exactly. Now. Yeah. So. I like that. To end with the quote, we have... Um, Actually, two. Um, the first one is, one reason people resist change is because they focus on what they have to give up instead of what they have to gain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is really another way of saying what we, what we were saying earlier. I, I like that. Yeah, I do too. And then a pretty smart guy named Albert Einstein said, the measure of intelligence is the ability to do math. No, I'm just kidding. It's the... <laughs> well, then I'm dumb as a rock. <laughs> I said it. Right. <laughs> the measure of intelligence is not math, people. I'm kidding. The measure of intelligence is the ability to change. Yes. So, um, yeah, math is definitely... Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> not my forte. <laughs> But, um, I see little penguins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she goes to cartoons right away. So, but somehow you passed your math class for nursing. So, good I think for you. they took pity on me. But, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> but, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, and the fact that we changed things up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that was smart. Yeah. I like that, that. Was, that was smart. That yeah. was smart. <laughs> but, uh, we encourage you to continue to, um, Comment on our YouTube channel, on our podcast, yes. on Facebook. Um, subscribe. Um, give us ideas of what you would like to listen to. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate yes, you please. hanging with us. Yeah. Definitely. And on the podcast channels, um, Stitcher, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Spotify, um, iTunes, and soon to be Amazon Podcasts. So find Soar and Pair Why Not Together out there, the two shadows kissing. That's us. We'll continue to have yes. fun.
fun times every week. So we appreciate you and um, hope that oh. you enjoy <laughs> your forgot. week. Yeah, she has to, again, have a great week, everybody. Technical <laughs> issues. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for checking in with us. Take care, everyone.